So we are going to try this again. Um, I took another crack at the slideshow. Hopefully I streamed it down a little bit more to make it a little bit easier to go through. I feel this is going to be a little bit of a cleaner video also. Um, I've also incorporated a model into the presentation. Since I don't have mine at school to sort of help, or I don't have mine home, they're all at school, to tr hopefully help visualize some of this stuff to go along with the um, slides that we have in here and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's take off. So we're talking about the digestive system and its primary function is to acquire nutrients from the environment. And what it's going to do is it's going to synthesize essential compounds, uh, or at least it's going to use those nutrients to synthesize essential compounds. That's anabolism. Uh, or it's going to break down larger molecules into smaller ones to provide energy for the cells throughout the rest of the body, and that's catabolism. There's two major, I guess you could say, uh, divisions within the um, digestive system. The main part is the actual digestive tract that is including the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines. And so basically, we're looking at this tube that starts in the mouth right here. Uh, that's a muscle-lined tube that connects uh, um, from your mouth to your anus through all of these different parts. Um, the food is going to come in direct contact with these tissues. That's how we can tell it apart, okay? Um, the other part is the accessory organs. These are all organs that are vital to the function of the digestive system, but they don't ever come in direct contact. Um, let me back up. They're not directly involved with the primary function of the digestive system. Now, most of these organs are not going to come in direct contact with the food. Um, things like your teeth uh, in your mouth over here, the tongue, uh, which is also used as part of the respiratory tract as well, um, your salivary glands is one, uh, liver, gallbladder, pancreas hanging out in the back are all vital, but don't come in direct contact. They also have other functions as well. Uh, so that's why we call those accessory organs. Um, and so basically we've got um, uh, five major processes. One, two, three, four, five, six major processes. Um, so the first one is ingestion. That's the food actually coming into your mouth. Uh, right here, okay? Um, then we come into the mechanical digestion, which is the chewing, grinding, shearing, tearing of the food. It happens in your mouth. Um, that's all the purple arrows, basically. It happens in your mouth. It also happens again in your stomach. Propulsion is the movement of food. Swallowing, which we'll talk about in the back of your throat, going into peristalsis. That's the regular rhythmic movement of food um, that happens in the, the esophagus right here, but also in the intestines farther on. Uh, chemical digestion is the actual breaking down of substances um, into smaller organic fragments and getting them ready for absorption, which is another, uh, the actual taking in of those nutrients into the bloodstream and then being circulated through the rest of the body. And then at the end of all that, as part of your digestive system, is the defecation, that is the expulsion of waste at the end um, in the form of feces out of your anus. And so basically, we're gonna go through your entire digestive system from beginning to end, um, more or less in one fell swoop, okay? Um, so, 
the when we talk about the lining of the digestive tract, the lining protects the surrounding the surrounding tissues against a lot of things. Um, corrosive acids and enzymes, mechanical stresses, bacteria that we're taking in or that are residing in your digestive tract. Um, we can have, so going more into this, all of these organs are in your abdominal cavity. So sitting below your lungs here, going down uh, into the pelvic region farther down. So about here-ish, right? Um, holding all of this stuff together is something called the peritoneum. Okay, um, the peritoneum, if you're looking to spell it, it is um, right there. And so you can divide it up into two parts, the visceral peritoneum, which surrounds the organs, you can see right here, and the parietal peritoneum, which lines the uh, actual body cavity right there. Um, as sort of an extension, you can see in some places, of the uh, peritoneum is something called the mesenteries. The mesenteries um, suspend portions of the digestive tract within this cavity right here. It holds everything together, provides a route for um, ducts, vessels, nerves to get into the different organs, uh, help stabilize the positions and prevent them from becoming tangled and knotted and stuff like that, especially your small intestines, which can be up into the neighborhood of 10 to 12 feet long. We wanna keep all that stuff in the same place. Um, basically, your mesenteries, another view. So this is one view showing um, the, how everything's sort of held together and they're all extensions of that peritoneum. Here's another shot showing those mesenteries and you can see it kind of looks like a web basically here in the middle holding all of those pieces together. There's certain points where your mesentery is anchored directly to that body cavity wall to provide support. Um, you've also, uh, you can have uh, other organs which are sort of outside of that uh, wall, like your pancreas is not inside the body cavity technically, it's retroparietal. We've got, moving on, we're gonna talk about the histology, that's the what the tissues look like basically. And so you can divide all of your organs into at least, so up to four um, divisions. You've got your mucosa, the submucosa, this is going from the inside out. So the mucosa is the innermost layer, then the submucosa, it's got a lot of um, vascular tissue in there. The muscular layer, that's where the smooth muscle is that controls all of this movement. And then the serosa is that outer layer, uh, basically right where that parietal um, peritoneum is, is existing, okay? Kind of like the pericardium when we talked about the heart, okay, at the beginning of the semester, if that rings a bell. Um, so, an action of the digestive system uh, is this idea of peristalsis, and we'll kind of talk about where that happens here in just a second. So, um, peristalsis is uh, the more or less orderly process by which food is moved throughout the body. So, if you've swallowed and you felt something really big, or you take an exceptionally big mouthful of water and you try to swallow it, and you can feel it going down, it kind of hurts a little bit, um, that's that peristalsis, okay? Um, it happens in the esophagus, it also happens in your intestines, and we'll mention that a little bit later. And there's more or less, there's four stages, okay? The first one, in the initial state, so we've got food coming in from the mouth right here, and it's heading in the direction, ultimately, of the anus, okay? Uh, we've got two types of muscle. We've got longitudinal muscle and we've got circular muscle. And uh, they're called that based on how they, uh, the direction that they contract, basically. Um, so as we start this process, we've got contraction of those circular muscles, creating this sort of pinch-off point right here, okay? Um, the circular muscles in front of the bolus. Now this thing right here, this wad of food, which we'll talk about in a second, it's called a bolus. It's basically a little round ball, okay? And so the muscles in the front are going to relax and allow for the passage of the food. The longitudinal muscles at this point are going to contract and uh, shorten the adjacent segments of the 
um, the tube, basically. So it's going to go, can you see that? It's going to shorten it up, right? And then from there, you're going to have a wave of uh, wave-like contractions of the circular muscles that are going to push the bolus forward. And then when everything relaxes, it's going to relax back behind the bolus and it's going to keep moving it forward. And then eventually um, it hits your stomach and it just kind of falls into it. Kind of. Uh, you've got another type of movement called segmentation. It's a uh, cycle of contractions that churn frag and fragments the bolus um, into different chunks, which helps mix the contents with intestinal secretions and sort of even out the concentration of nutrients for later absorption. It doesn't really follow a set pattern. It just sort of goes like this. Um, and that's the official technical sound, um, the anatomical sound that it makes also in case you were wondering. It doesn't necessarily push materials in any one direction. It just sort of swishes them back and forth until eventually you get this even distribution of nutrients. Like here you've got concentrations of different nutrients and then eventually we fragment those and break them into these sections like that. 